Tallulah Brockman Bankhead was born in 1902 in the Schiffman Building, located on the corner of the East Side Square and Eustace Avenue in Huntsville, Alabama. Though she lived in Huntsville for a short while, Tallulah is Huntsville's most beloved celebrity. A historic marker now stands at her birthplace, and in 2002, the city celebrated her 100th birthday with multiple events. The beginning of Tallulah's life was marked by tragedy when her mother, Adelaide Eugenia Bakehead, died from sepsis a few weeks after giving birth. Her father, William Brockman Bankhead, sent Tallulah and her older sister, Eugenia, to live with their paternal grandparents in Jasper, Alabama. As a child, Tallulah sought attention, good or bad, wherever she could get it, and eventually proved difficult for her grandparents to handle. As a result, the sisters spent their young lives going between the family estate in Jasper and numerous boarding schools. Some of Tallulah's fame in the South can likely be attributed to the legacy of her Alabama family members. A family of politicians, the Bankheads were powerful and their influence shaped the nation in the early 20th century. Tallulah's grandfather, John Hollis Bankhead II, served in the Alabama House of Representatives, the Alabama Senate, the United States House of Representatives, and the U.S. Senate. He advocated investing in the nation's infrastructure and helped to develop the Bankhead Highway, which ran from Washington, D.C. to San Diego, California. Tallulah's father, William Brockman Bankhead, was a lawyer and politician Prior to his career in politics, he was the attorney for the city of Huntsville. He went on to serve in the Alabama House of Representatives and later in the U.S. House of Representatives, for which he served as the 42nd Speaker from 1936 to 1940. He is the only Alabamian to have served in this role. He was considered a liberal Democrat for the time and was supportive of unions and President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal policies. Marie Bankhead Owen, Tallulah's aunt, was the wife of Thomas M. Owen, the first director of the state-funded Alabama Department of Archives and History. Marie and her husband worked together to get legislation passed to fund the department. When Thomas passed away in 1920, Marie Owen was named his successor by the Board of Directors. She served as director for 35 years. A white supremacist and one of Alabama's most well-known anti-suffragists, Marie supported a state's rights platform and the disenfranchisement of African-American people. Tallulah got her acting start in 1917 at the young age of 15 when Picture Play Magazine ran a screen opportunity contest. Tallulah submitted a portrait but forgot to include her personal information along with it. Some sources say this was a stunt to drum up interest. Tallulah says, Forthwith, I riffled off a picture of myself in a shovel-like hat, a dress with long sleeves and a high neck, but in my enthusiasm, I neglected to identify myself. Either way, it worked. Tallulah's picture was published in the September 1917 issue of the magazine with the caption, Who is she? In the South in 1917, it was considered improper for women to work. Tallulah's father was supportive. He too loved theater and had aspirations to act in his younger years. But Tallulah also needed the blessing and financial support of her grandparents. Tallulah's grandfather deduced that if she didn't get her shot at becoming an actress, she would probably brood about it. With Aunt Louise, Louise Bankhead Perry Lund, as chaperone, Tallulah was sent to New York to become an actor. In New York, Tallulah got several small parts in silent films and a few plays on Broadway. This is when she developed her larger-than-life public persona and began using the well-known endearment, Darling. Success as an actor proved more difficult than young Tallulah imagined, but she was equal to the challenge and managed to make ends meet as a young actress. The decision to take part in the play The Dancers in London was Tallulah's first taste of success. The British loved Tallulah's vivacious personality and attention-seeking antics. 
She stayed there for eight years, appearing in numerous plays. None of these plays received critical acclaim, but many of them were popular solely because of, the, of Tallulah's performances. In 1931, Tallulah returned to America, working briefly in the motion picture business under contract with Paramount Pictures. After discovering she lacked passion for movie acting, she returned to Broadway in 1933 and worked steadily. Tallulah's first taste of critical acclaim came in 1939 when she won Variety's Best Actress of the Year award for her role in the play The Little Foxes and appeared on the cover of Life magazine. She received critical acclaim again in 1942 for her role in the play The Skin of Our Teeth and in 1944 for her role in Alfred Hitchcock's motion picture Lifeboat. Later, Tallulah worked in both TV and radio. Tallulah Bankhead is generally beloved by critics and is considered to be one of the best actresses of her time. Tallulah is perhaps best known for her social nonconformity, but from a modern perspective, she was merely ahead of her time. While most women in the early to mid 1900s considered marriage their top priority, Tallulah relished her autonomy and freedom to live life how she pleased. Tallulah was briefly wed to the actor John Emery, but many speculated this was a stunt to please her father, and the pair divorced in 1941, less than a year after William Bankhead's death. Although she never described herself as gay or bisexual, Tallulah openly had relationships with both men and women. Tallulah's lifestyle was a departure from her conservative Southern upbringing. But once her grandparents and father were gone, she saw no reason to minimize it. The political aspirations of the Bankhead patriarchs must have influenced Tallulah. But true to form, she tackled political activism in her own way. As soon as she had a platform, she used it to speak out against racism and in support of the civil rights movement. In the 1930s, she lent her talents to a benefit for the Scottsboro Boys' legal defense. The Scottsboro Boys were a group of nine young black men who were falsely accused of sexually assaulting two white women. When tried by an all-white jury, each man was convicted of the crime and eight were sentenced to death. In 1948, when Southern Dixiecrats seceded from the Democratic Party over President Truman's civil rights program, Tallulah campaigned for him. When he was re-elected, he invited her to the inauguration, where she famously booed Strom Thurmond, who ran against Truman as a Dixiecrat, and split the Democratic vote. In 1954, she became a life member of the NAACP. Tallulah was famously quoted in a 1960 article for Ebony Magazine saying, All our follies, our brutality, the outrages perpetuated on humanity have a common root ignorance.